There's one really quite large change and that's to do with a render codec. This may be the sort of thing that you say, wow, that's incredibly useful, or for some people may not be that important at all. But the major thing is that they have included the ability to use the Avid codec properly inside of Premiere. So you see this new heading that says DNXHD. That means that you are going to be setting up a project preset and you're going to be rendering the file into Avid's own format, which is DNX. The whole point about this is when you do an effect and you can't play it back in real time, you have to render it. If it's going to render it in some kind of compressed format, what will happen is you'll render it, it'll be rendered into a compressed format, you'll then go through and you'll export it and it'll get rendered again. And every time you re-render, every time you're going from one compressed format to another, you might end up with more noise and artifacts being added in. Well, the point about Avid DNX is it's a very simple codec. It's a bit like high definition DV in that it does every frame as a whole frame. It takes up a reasonable amount of space, but it's a really nice standard codec. You'll find if you buy something like a Blackmagic Hyperdex shuttle or a Blackmagic camera, you can record into Avid DNX format in that if you want to. But with Apple doing all their changes to do with Final Cut Pro these days, you have to wonder how long they'll be supporting Apple ProRes. DNX could well take over as the intermediate codec of choice for everybody. And Adobe have now brought it into Premiere. It can now be assigned as a codec that you can use for rendering. So you can make files out of it. When you go to export a movie, then there's DNX codec versions which you can use in there. They also do smart rendering. So you can see you've got smart rendering here. If you actually have some Avid DNX stuff on the timeline in the first place and you've got your renders in DNX, then when you render it out into this kind of file, it doesn't remake any of the stuff, it just sticks it all together. You get the same kind of smart rendering with some other codecs as well these days, like XD Cam. So there's a lot of work that's gone on in there. But the fact that it's got DNX in there, the fact that it understands Avid files, it actually understands Avid MXF files. In fact, you can even load up clips which you'll find in an Avid media folder. And a lot of those different clips will actually load directly up into Premiere. The other quite major changes that we have in this version of Premiere are to do with multi-camera. So I haven't actually got some multi-camera clips here, but I'm just gonna take a bunch of clips in the bin, right click on them and say, create a multi-camera source sequence. Now there's various ways of actually doing a multi-camera sequence. One is to drop them onto the timeline and then line them up, or two is select them in the bin and then get Premiere to line them up for you. Now if you're getting Premiere to line it up, it's gonna be, is it gonna do it on in points or out points or time code? These are the things that were in Premiere Pro CS6. The new one that you have in this version of Premiere is this one. You can get it to line stuff up based on the audio. So I am basically going to say line it up on the audio, move the clips into its own little bin after they've been processed, make up a new sequence based on one of the clips and just go for it. And it goes through, it analyzes all the clips and then does its best to line them all up. Obviously it depends on how good the audio is. One camera right at the back of the room might not be picking up the audio as well as the others, but it's a nice thing they've added into it which will probably make your multi-camera work a lot easier. When it comes to editing the multi-camera, so I've set it all up and I'm ready to go, then Premiere does not create a new window. Instead, it just takes over the two existing windows that you've got. Other things that have changed. The way that Premiere deals with hardware changed greatly inside of CS6 so that instead of having different settings per sequence, you just go to playback and then choose whatever you want to output your video through. This hasn't changed tremendously. The way that CS6 works is actually quite a lot better than the way CS5 works. You're gonna need new drives for whatever hardware you're using with Premiere, your Blackmagic's or Matrox or whatever, but then that's normal. And obviously we'll expect to have those pretty soon after it comes out. One change that we have got is that you can actually enable or disable the transmit, the output through whatever your device is from the program monitor here. So that's just disabled it, that's re-enabled it, or by coming into your preferences. There's been another nice little change with the media browser. I'm gonna get out of this project. I'm gonna make up a new one, call it something. And I wanna bring in some of the clips that I was using in that project into this one. In previous versions of Premiere, I would go file and then import and then point it to the Premiere Pro project but now you can use the media browser. So here is that project, double click on it, and then inside of the media browser, up pops everything that was in that project, all the different sequences and the bins and so on, 
and I can just grab hold of that bin and bring it straight into this project. Grab hold of that sequence and bring it in as well. Nice little change. You can now see the contents of whatever project you're trying to bring in in the media browser, not just by file and import. If you have ever brought in a clip and it's come in as a stereo clip and you say, oh, I wish it was mono or whatever, you have been able to select the clip in the bin, right click, go up to modify, audio channels, and then say, right, well, don't let's use what's in the file. Let's say it's mono or stereo or whatever. Then when you throw it onto the timeline, you have two separate mono tracks as opposed to one stereo one. Now that hasn't changed. But what you can do is that after putting a clip on the timeline, you can now go back to the clip into the bin and you can change the audio channel. So the next time I use this, that's gonna be seen as a stereo clip. So it pops up with this message. I could read it all out, but essentially what it's saying is you're changing the audio channels on this. It's not gonna change ones on the timeline. It'll only change it the next time you bring it in. Again, a small little change, but actually very useful because in previous versions, if I ever wanted to change that, I ended up importing two different versions of the clips and faffing, and it was a real pain in the posterior. This is a lot nicer.